Hey friends and wine lovers, or should I say sake lovers. Welcome back for another video. About a year ago, we did a sake tasting. So I'm really excited to talk about something a little different today. This particular one here is called Pearls of Simplicity, and it's a very high quality Junmai Daiginjo, and we'll go into all the details about that. Well, there's not much to do here. We don't need a corkscrew or anything like that. Interesting little fun fact about sake, by the way, is uh, sake is a term that describes all alcoholic beverages in Japan. Technically, the term for this is Nihonshu, and uh, Nihonshu means the alcoholic beverage of Japan. So if I order a Sapporo in Japan, I'm mm -hmm. technically ordering... Yeah, if you order like a Sapporo beer, yeah, that's, that's also sake. So just ordering a sake in Japan doesn't mean much? No, you have to ask for a Nihonshu. And one of the uh, sort of drinking rituals or traditions in Japan is that uh, you always pour for somebody else. It's a sign of humility. And uh, you make sure that the glass never goes empty. That's the other tradition. I like that tradition. That's a good tradition. <laughs> <laughs> so sake is fermented from rice. They actually call themselves brewers in Japan. I've seen uh, that. It's almost like brewing beer because it's considered a grain. And there are something like 120 different strains of rice in Japan. Uh, and they claim that each one of them, just like grapes, delivers a different style and flavor. And the secret ingredient is a fungus, actually. It's called koji, Aspergillus orzai, and it's a fungus that grows on moist rice. They found that it actually made it uh, taste more complex. Much like beer, right? I mean, kind of, I guess beer was kind of... That. Yeah, yeah, they were all happy accidents. Well, yeah, right. And wine was as well, too. Uh, there's 47 prefectures in Japan. Every prefecture has their strain of rice, and like they say that that's their particular flavor. These days, any good quality sake is going to list a couple different things on the label on the back. It's gonna give you the prefecture where it was made. It's gonna give you the strain of rice that they used. And sometimes it'll give you uh, flavor and tasting notes as well. And this one here is a join mai, meaning that it uses only four basic ingredients. And that's considered to be of higher quality because it's more pure and simple. The uh, Daiginjo designation refers to uh, something that they do in the process of making these called uh, rice polishing. They polish 50% of the original rice grain off to the point where uh, the rice grains end up looking just like little like beads, like little pearls. So you're saying the more it's polished, the, it's considered the higher quality? Yes. And I would imagine it must also be more expensive because you're literally polishing away yes. the product. And that supposedly leads to a more pure and kind of like simple flavor, and that's considered to be higher quality. The uh, traditional toast that you hear most often is kampai. 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 And uh, sometimes they say bonsai, meaning may you live for a thousand years. So on the nose, first and foremost, uh, it's a very nutty, kind of yeasty smell. And that would make sense. That koji is probably really contributing a lot to that, that characteristic. Yeah, there's a funk on there. It's got a funk. Yeah, and then there's a slight like hint of melon in the background. Whenever I drink sake, I always go back to uh, like when you're eating a watermelon and you bite into the green part of the rind. Very fruity, very tropical actually. Um, banana is a characteristic that comes to mind. The taste and the smell don't necessarily always match. No, they don't match in this case. Wine is typically high in acidity. These are much lower in pH. Uh, so you're not gonna get that sort of like mouth watering acidity right. that you get from wine. Uh, it's a lot more smooth and it feels like a lot more kind of like oily on the lips. It's like slippery. I know exactly what you're talking about. And of course it's 15.5% alcohol, so it's got a kick. Yeah, it'll kick you. Yeah, it's gonna be a challenge. Uh, to keep that glass full. I know. A Japanese tradition, yeah. <laughs> what do you feel in, um, I mean, the obvious is sushi, but food-wise, other than that, what, what, what do you think? Well, because it's so fruity, and it's got a lot of that tropical fruit, um, pork comes to mind. Uh, people roast it with like fresh, fresh fruit all the time. I like love it, I love pears it. Pears and apples. Like, ginger is really, uh, is a staple in Japanese cuisine. Sure. So anything with ginger, I think would work really well with this, the fruitiness here too. Um, you could even do like ginger chicken, like a roasted ginger chicken. Fish, anything with yeah. like, like the, a saltiness. I could see tofu or like natto, like fermented products. Um, and obviously any rice dish, probably pork over rice. Is this something that they use to make cocktails or what? Oh, yeah, yeah. to be sipped just the way Oh, yeah. I mean, since the sake revolution has kind of happened in the past 20 years or so, uh, there are, are a litany of recipes out there for sake. So that is a thing that they Yeah, do. yeah. It's absolutely a thing, especially sake spritzers. Oh, yeah. Uh, top it off with, like, some sparkling wine. Thanks so much for drinking with us today and exploring the world of sake. 
Uh, we are going to do a video for every single bottle of wine and sake that we've tasted over the past couple of years in the Premium Wine Club. So if you want to make sure that you get those videos, uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel. On behalf of WTSO, I'm Mark Subsick. Cheers, everybody. Or, uh, sorry, come by. <laughs>